So these, this is hardware that was just removed from my spine um, three weeks ago. Those are all from my back. Yeah, so this is the screw that was going from here to here. I was a very active person. I had a really good life. I mean, I was happy. I, you know, my career was where I wanted it to be. My children were doing well. And then one day I went home and went to go get my mail and my back just collapsed on me. I ended up having to crawl back into my home. And then a week later, I had my first back surgery. Then I had another back surgery two months later and another back surgery two months later. And from there, it just progressed. I have had a total of 34 surgeries, 12 of those on my spine. I had cervical cancer, I had to have a hysterectomy, I got a transfusion, I got hepatitis C, um, I had hernia operations, I had to have mammoplasty, and you know, just my health just plummeted um, all of a sudden. In 2017, they went to the pain management doctor. Basically, he said, you know, that doctors have to taper their patients um, down greatly on their pain medications, and we're going to have to reduce you 80%, take 80% of your pain meds away. At that time, I was so flabbergasted and I walked out the door, came home and cried, and then, you know, started looking into why, why, you know, why is this happening? You know, I didn't do anything wrong. In 2017, an estimated 72,000 people died of overdose deaths in the United States, many of them from prescription opioids. Because of that, doctors feel intense pressure to reduce prescribing of these medications. I spoke to several dozen medical professionals, and many of them told me that they're worried that if they continue prescribing opioids to their chronic pain patients, they could face repercussions. This means that many chronic pain patients, like Maria, are being cut off their medications, even when they never use them inappropriately, and they're benefiting from them. I have some serious issues with my body that can't be fixed. They're incurable diseases, medical conditions that can't be treated. The only thing I have going for me is my pain treatment, and to take that away, it makes me feel like my life doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I suffer. My pain doctor told me that he regrets doing this to me, that I don't deserve this, and he's sorry, but that he has to do it. And I haven't done anything wrong, and they've acknowledged that I haven't done anything wrong, but they're tapering every one of their patients, and it's just the way it is. It is a really hard situation for doctors these days. There's a lot of pressures on us um, to reduce the dose because of the, um, all the overdose deaths and the regulatory changes and insurance companies' limitations. A lot of doctors may be concerned about losing their license, although that rarely happens. But a lot of doctors are, are concerned about that and they don't actually know where the boundaries are, and so they think it's safer if they use lower doses um, or just completely stop prescribing. I understand them going after pill mills. I totally get that. I think that we should count pills. I think we should keep people accountable for every pill because there is a problem out there. But the people that need the drugs should be able to get them. I think increasing opiates is a terrible thing to do. The challenge we have is the people that are already on the higher dose. There are definitely some people that there's no other tools that you can use that will provide the relief that they were getting from their higher doses of opiates. I used to be able to throw a load of clothes in the washer. I used to be able to cook dinner or cook breakfast. I used to be able to go out and spend time with my family, go to a movie, go out to dinner. The only time I leave my house anymore is to go to a doctor's appointment. But I spend a lot of time in here. It's either here or in the chair, whichever is making me more comfortable at the time, you know? Being tapered, it's not just a physical issue, but it's also an emotional, because you are losing parts of your life. It has an effect on everybody around me. I know people that have gone to street drugs. A lot of people right now, a lot of pain patients, are committing suicide because they can't handle the pain. Whenever I hear of a patient committing suicide because they're suffering in pain, I can relate because I have so much respect for life and I don't want to see my family suffer. I have not considered suicide, but I can't say that if my pain keeps getting worse and going untreated, 
that I may change my mind in the future. Of course, the government has to work to tackle the opioid overdose crisis, but it also has to minimize harms to patients like Maria who have a legitimate medical need for these medications.